Okay. Good evening, everybody. I'm Jim Way, Executive Director of the Astronautical Society. Uh, welcome back. Hope everybody had a good little break there. Uh, looking forward to seeing a lot of people uh, in the webinar posing questions for our presenters. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's get started with our next session. Uh, this session is JAXA Capabilities and Results. Our session chair uh, for this segment is Keji Murakami, director of the JAXA Moscow office. This session includes six presentations uh, being shown here for you. I'll give you a second to take a look at that. Or we'll be talking mouse mission, levitation furnace, and uh, investigation of gravity dependence and some other great stuff. So without further ado, we will get started with the five minute executive summaries. So please run the first summary. This is the outline of the device. The container is made of PET sheet, so it is flexible. There are various type of the container, three cell type, six cell type, and four cell type with short capillary. In addition, uh, with the sheet containing oxygen absorber, uh, we can crystallize under deoxidized condition. The container can be sealed by heat sealer. This is very easy and reliable. We have launched about 650 flexible containers without any trouble. There are various types of the capillaries, not only for counter diffusion method, but for dialysis and other methods. Uh, this is a capillary for counter diffusion method. A straight glass capillary with protein solution. And a, a piece of gel tube is attached to the end of the capillary. To start crystallization in space, the diffusion is stopped by pressing the gel tube with a stopping bar. Uh, this is a capillary for dialysis method. A dialysis membrane is fixed on the end of the uh, gel tube by a rubber ring. When the capillary with the sample solution is stopped, the end of the capillary is closed with the membrane. Uh, this is a capillary for larger crystals. One side of the capillary gel tube is attached. There are two types. This is for the, a counter diffusion method, and this one is for the dialysis method. A small piece of built-in dialysis membrane is placed in the connection part. Sometimes a protein crystallographer would like to crystallize with a mechanism similar to the vapor diffusion method. For this purpose, we are providing the diffusion pair with osmotic concentration. A protein solution is loaded in a glass capillary part and the reservoir solution is loaded in a silicon tube part. After the stopper is released, the components of the protein uh, and the reservoir solution starts diffusion toward opposite direction, and the concentration of the reservoir component is reduced. Then the osmotic concentration will occur simultaneously through the silicon tube. After the concentrations of the protein and reservoir uh, components are increased, then the crystallization starts like a vapor diffusion method. For protein crystal growth in space, the launch scrub may sometimes occur. At the countermeasures with a flexible container, uh, the diffusion path of the capillary can be closed by pressing the diffusion stopper from outside. This is an example. We can clip it just after the sample loading on ground. Then we can transport it to the launch site and then unclip it just before the rate access or in space. Uh, with this method, we can start crystallization at desirable timing, especially on orbit with easy manipulation. The actual 
clipping method can be optimized uh, to the container designed by each space agency. Uh, here are some typical three excellent results using our devices in space. Uh, PGDPP11, HPGDS, and PCCL45A. In this case, uh, not only X-ray diffraction, but neutron diffraction is applied and Newton's cradle-like proton relay pathway of the catalytic cycle was found. This is the outline of our business. Uh, we can provide not only the devices, but also the services uh, to the service providers conducting protein crystal growth in space. And we also provide these devices uh, commercially to protein crystal grower who are working in laboratories on ground. Thank you for your attention. Hello, everyone. I'm Lisa Okara from JAXA. Today, I'd like to talk about our facility on ISS for rodent research, which will also be used for the upcoming NASA and JAXA joint partial gravity rodent research. This photo was taken at the meeting with NASA and JAXA members. Here you can see the researchers and the members from NASA and JAXA, and the third one from the right with me. Here are the points of my presentation. First, I will introduce JAXA Rodent Research Platform on ISS, which can evaluate the long-term partial gravity using mice. Second, the platform has been successfully updated to increase the capacity and ability to study partial gravity. Finally, the upcoming NASA and JAXA Joint Partial Gravity Rodent Research will use this facility. The sample will be shared among the researchers from NASA and JAXA and will also be analyzed together. I will start with the introduction of our facilities on ISS. As you know, the space flight causes many biological effects to the human body. But the factors are very complicated during space flight, such as gravitational changes and space radiation. So, to analyze just the, the gravitational effect during space flight, we developed JAXA Rodent Research Platform on ISS which has a centrifuge to induce gravity in space. Centrifuge equipped biological experimental facility, CBEF, has a microgravity and artificial gravity section and arrows individual housing of mice. Using the CBEF, we have completed five missions and all of our mice have returned safely to ground. The effect of space flight was evaluated by comparing microgravity and artificial earth gravity in space. Recently, the new compartment called CBEFL which can install one large centrifuge or two small centrifuges has been developed. The combination of these facilities increased the capability to load two or three artificial gravity sections. So far, a series of JAXA mass missions have been completed to study if artificial Earth gravity in space could prevent the effect during space flight in various types of tissue such as skeletal, immunological, 
and reproductive system, as shown here. With the upcoming collaboration of NASA and JAXA researchers, the long-term effect of various types of partial gravity induced by JAXA rodent research platform will be determined. Each tissue will be carefully studied by professionals from both NASA and JAXA by collaboration. In conclusion, a facility is now ready for study of partial gravity and various collaboration. This study could provide novel findings which lead to future human exploration in space. Thank you so much for your attention. Introduction for JAXA Mars Mission and JAXA Energy Sample Sharing Program. Osamu Funatsu speaking. The JAXA MHU Sample Sharing Program is an attempt to maximize use of EICI and used samples from each JAXA Mars mission. Sample sharing is equal to by specimen sharing as NASA. The JAXA MHU Sample Sharing Program includes three words. First, is an answer of opportunity. This is to provide the JAXA mass mission samples to Japanese researchers. Second is internal cooperation. This is the collaboration of the TICI for the JAXA mass mission and JAXA selected Japanese researchers for other feasibility study missions. Third is international cooperation. This is for other country researchers, such as those in the US. In the case of international cooperation, it is shown below. If you are interested in the some Energy Sample Sharing Program, you need to contact your agency such as NASA. Content. We attach great importance to international cooperation for maximizing use of unused samples, as same as the driven mission. We want other country researchers to know the characteristic of JAXA mass missions. We introduce our hardware and our missions. We have done two international cooperation, MH1 and 2, as the JAXA MH sample sharing program. In the future, it might be adaptable for all our missions. We hope that other country researchers will actively be interested in our missions. In this short presentation, we will introduce two contents, MH1 and MH2. As JAXA MH sample sharing program for MH1, Professor Delk joined us to sample the eye tissues under the Japan-US collaborative framework JPUS-43. The results for this international cooperation were written in the papers shown here. If you are interested in such international cooperation, we hope you contact your agency, such as NASA. In MH2, we exchange some image samples to NASA RR4 samples under the JP US OP3 because NASA RR mass samples involve group housing. We think it's viable to compare our individual housing even if the tissues are the same. 
Somebody who would just come out and show, see, show here. Now, just by an instant sharing program has been available for MH1 and 2. But in the future, it could be available for other missions after MH2. If you are interested in the JAXA Mars mission and the JAXA Energy Sample Sharing Program, please contact us. Thank you very much for taking me your time to listen to our presentation. Thank you. Vicky Salvatari from JAXA. Today I talk, I'd like to talk about electrostatic levitation furnace, ELF. ELF means electrostatic levitation furnace, which is an equipment for continuous process and can levitate and melt both conductive and non-conductive materials. ELF can handle with materials whose melting temperature is up to 3000 degrees Celsius. Using ELF, you can get some physical properties such as density, surface tension, and viscosity. Elf's supercooling capability may produce innovative material. Upper left photo shows the ISS ELF on board the Japanese experimental module Kibo. Before developing ELF on board ISS, JAXA developed ground-based electrostatic levitation furnace and got several achievements. The lower left figure shows melting temperature of metals put on periodic table. JAXA measured some physical properties for high melting temperature metals whose melting temperature is more than 3000 degrees Celsius. Pink pillar shows materials whose thermal physical properties were measured only by JAXA's ESL, which is ground levitator. Measured data published through the database of Japanese research organization. Second example is about computer simulation improvement using thermal physical properties measured by ESL. This is about casting simulation for turbine blade. Left and right figures are turbine blades. Middle graph shows viscosity dependence on temperature. Viscosity measurement with ESL revealed a significant difference between the measured values and the traditionally estimated values. When the measured values were input into a casting simulation, the analysis result of the flow changed significantly. This result contributes to the consideration of free casting measures. To further expand the, the capability, JAXA installed electrostatic levitation furnace in ISS, that is ISS ERF. The upper charts are the examples of achievements using ISS ERF. The left chart shows density versus temperature of rare earth oxide which melting point is near 3000 Kelvin, which can be measured only by ISS ERF. The right chart is an introduction of an article about big discovery by international team including JAXA. When you use not only ISS ERF but also other tools such as synchrotron facility or supercomputer, you can get powerful tool for analyzing material structure. International team including JAXA had a great report on the NPG Asia materials this year. The team used ISS ERF. Spring 8, Japanese synchrotron facility, and supercomputer reveals the structure of molten erbium oxide, which shows certain level of order, despite in liquid phase. This is a discovery that overturns the conventional theory that liquids do not have long-range period periodicity. International investigators will also use ISS ERF. As for United States, currently four investigators will use ISS ERF through JPUS OP3 as follows. The first mission, Round Robin, started in June and now under progress. Thank you for attending. Good morning. 
and good evening, everyone. Thank you for watching this presentation. I'm Chihiro Kurosawa with JAXA, Gem Utilization Center. Today, I will be giving an introduction of JAXA Hourglass mission. In this mission, we investigated the gravity dependence of soft, ter soft terrain on planetary surfaces. The principal investigator of this mission is Dr. Otsuki, belong to JAXA. I will begin by talking about the JAXA's exploration missions. JAXA have planned the various future exploration missions. In this mission, the rover and the machines will land on the surface of the moon and Martian moons. The moon and Martian moon surfaces are covered by soft granular regolith, besides also have a low gravity. This is different from the Earth's environment. To design and develop the exploration machines, it is necessary to understand the characteristics of these granular materials and the machine terrain interaction in low gravity environments. In this mission, we will observe the characteristics of granular materials under high quality low gravity environment using an artificial gravity generator on the Japanese experiment module Kibo of the International Space Station. The Hourglass mission's goal is to obtain the information that contributes to a future spacecraft design. I will move on to methods of Hourglass mission. For creating low gravity, we will use an artificial gravity generator. It can rotate from 20 to 140 revolutions per minute and generate the gravity, artificial gravity from 0.1 gravity to 2.0 gravity. In this mission, the gravity conditions are changed as 0.06 to 2.0 gravity, and there are the lunar gravity and mass gravity are included. This is our mission's experiment hardware. We call it our grass box. The hourglass box is palm top size for contain or measurement unit of artificial gravity generator. This is schematic of hourglass box. It has a container which are in shape of hourglass and measuring cylinder. The sample of granular materials are installed in the container. It is driven with primary batteries the hourglass and the measurement cylinder start to reverse every one minute by submotor after power switches are turned on. The behavior of granular materials are observed by CMOS camera. This table shows the name, size distribution, and images of samples in the order of priority. As this table shows, Eight kinds of granular materials are selected as samples. Alumina beads, silica sand, and toyota sands, which are standard for shibia engineering, and Runa, Mars Moon, and Mars regular Shimerant. Runa, Mars Moon are targets of huge exploration, and the basic data is very important for developing the spacecraft. I'd like to finish with a summary. Firstly, I showed you the JAXA's future exploration mission. Secondly, I showed you the methods of our grass mission. I pointed out that the artificial gravity generator can provide high quality low gravity. Finally, I showed the samples. There are albina beads, some standard sands for civil engineering, and regular shimmerants where are targets of the exploration missions. The results of our grass mission provide the basic data for the construction of Terramica mix on spatial bodies and optimize the designs of future exploration machines. We completed the our grass mission on last May and now in progress of analysis. Thank you for listening. Hello everyone, we'd like to thank you for giving us the chance to speak here today.
We are members of Jack's Mice team. I'm Akane Yamoto and I have been science coordinator for MHU mission since first mission. Hello, my name is Hideaki Hotta. I'm developing biological experiment facilities to be used in Japanese experiment module Jibo of ISS. Thank you. We are here today to introduce our new system for mice research in space. The objective of this presentation is to introduce a new experimental support system named TERRAS. This system has a unique feature of visualizing real-time changes not only in level cell dynamics but also in gene expression level. We think this system will be of particular interest to biological researchers. We've already adopted two science missions. We'd like to know if overseas researchers are interested. We will need to set up a formal collaboration, so please contact us if you are interested. Let's start by looking at the unique features of TERRAS. TERRAS has two unique features. One is that you can perform analysis without obtaining endpoint samples. Past on orbit small animal research missions have prioritized evaluation of the animals by obtaining their endpoint samples. And this has achieved many positive and informative results. However, if there is data we want, we have no choice but to finish the experiment. Now TERRAS can solve this problem. This system can provide periodic observations of the gene function of small living animals. In addition, TERRAS can provide when and where in the body that the gene expression changes using luminescence imaging. Therefore, by analyzing the last state and the progress. We will able to analyze time course changes and to understand microgravity effects in greater depth. This concludes my talk on the unique features of our new system. Moving on to the next section. Now let's move on to discussing the system overview. First, we'd like to explain how to visualize gene expression level in a small animal. This system uses luciferase, a substance derived from fireflies, which are widely used in gene reporter assays. We produce a genetically modified mouse that has the luciferase gene downstream of the promoter of a target gene. If the target gene is expressed, light from the mouse can be captured. The captured light is digitally processed by dedicated. We base this system on the IBIS imaging system, which is used on the ground as an in vivo imaging device. Now, in vivo imaging analysis can be performed in space as well as on the ground. Now, just summarize, let's quickly look at the main point again. First, JAX developed a new experimental support system to visualize real-time changes in the gene expression level. 
This system can analyze results of training and point sample and visualize when and where change in gene expression level occur. We plan to launch this system and perform checks next spring. After everything check out, we plan to conduct an experiment to investigate the mechanism related to aging in microgravity. This new system can handle any small animal. We can provide this system for mutual utilization of experiment facility along with collaborative research. Please contact us if you are interested. Well, this brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Okay, excellent. Thank you very, very much to all of our presenters. Um, very uh, interesting projects. Um, so I would like to uh, make sure that uh, Murakami-san uh, is up on screen and has your microphone turned on. If you could join us, Keiji. Ah, there you are. Hello. Can you hear me? Let's unmute, if you would. And then uh, we'll get into our Q&A session. OK. There you, you are, sir. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I can hear you just fine now. OK. Excellent. All right. Uh, well. I will, uh, our, our routine here is to ask questions. Uh, all, the, all the participants should ask questions using the Q&A tool at the bottom of their screen. And um, we will go through question and answer period for the next 30 minutes. And with that, uh, Murakami-san, I will turn it over to you. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for the presentation and the, for the panelists. So I believe at this moment uh, we have one question. So the moon gravity utilization on board the centrifuge. This is for. Okay. Uh, Ms. Uh, Lisa Okada? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. So please answer the question. Thank you for asking the question. And the uh, answer is um, uh, we provided uh, several publications, and uh, according to the publication, we know that the, um, in case of skeletal muscle and bone density, the artificial earth gravity on ISS can prevent the uh, decrease of these changes. So um, some in some tissues, we can prevent the microbiology, uh, microgravity effect, but in some other tissue, it couldn't. So please check our publication. I, um, I put the detail on my full briefing. Thank you. Thank you. And so the answer is that the, it depends on the tissues. So it's hard to say that the, the simple question, the simple answer. That is the so, understanding. Okay. For the uh, attendance, do you have any other questions? If not, another question just came up in the tool oh. there. Yeah. Uh, let's give me a second moment. You can move. Uh, the this is also for. Okada-san, maybe 
can small memory because the mice was smaller than rats, like dwarf hamsters and like ribbon artificial gravity lotus? Thank you for Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for asking the question. And uh, uh, until now, we have not developed the uh, equipment for the bigger animals, but uh, it can, it, it is possible. So if we can increase the mass of facility, so um, it's the future work, I think. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then, so another question is uh, also for months. So do this research platform, I just, uh, from the experiment conducted on the yes, it is, is it possible to estimate how the mass will react on the lunar gravity? If so, which part of the mass body could be estimated to have the most impact on the lunar surface? This is also Okata-san or other. Thank you for asking more question. And uh, that is a very interesting point. And from our recent research, the body weight changes before and after moon's gravity was similar to the microgravity suggesting that the moon's gravity is not enough to maintain our body on um, under moon's gravity. On the other hand, the, some of the tissue uh, showed similar to the level of Earth's gravity. So we are now analyzing these data and start preparing to publish soon. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have now a question to Tanaka-san. What is the purpose to grow crystals in space? Yeah, uh, so the, uh, the purpose is to get a fine crystal for the X-ray diffraction analysis and also the neutron diffraction analysis. Uh, the most of the protein crystals grow in the uh, space is uh, have a better diffraction resolution and the shape uh, will be a better uh, that means that the, the clusterization is suppressed in the, under the microgravity condition uh, there are a lot of uh, theoretical analysis uh, why such a phenomenon occurs and uh, if we enhance the microgravity effect, uh, then uh, we can get a, a much better crystals in orbit. Uh, we, we have a lot of experiences and uh, also a lot of method about this issue. So now we can provide a uh, uh, much uh, good crystals in high uh, probability. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Tanaka-san. And also for the question for Tanaka-san, are there any possibility to use the flexible continuous other than the growing protein crystals? Ah, so the main point is how to increase the uh, uh, number of the uh, conditions in the limited uh, volume. Uh, and the second point is that uh, uh, from the uh, sample loading to uh, sample recovery, it takes uh, more than several months. And during that period, uh, the uh, solutions uh, contained inside the container should be kept without any evaporation. And uh, to achieve that uh, uh, specification, uh, usual uh, hard container is not suitable and so we developed the soft uh, container with a flexible thin sheet, pet sheet. 
uh, the pet sheet is coated with the uh, uh, non-gas permeable uh, coating. So uh, it is very stable to contain the solution without any evaporation. Thank you very much. And to also a question for Tanaka-san. Is there use for capital devices on Earth? On, on, on Earth. On, what? On ground. On, on gravity. On no. ground. Or is there? Ah, yes, yes, yes. On ground. Yes. Uh, and we are providing uh, th those uh, materials commercially and uh, can easily be uh, purchased through the uh, conventional uh, distributor. Thank you. Okay. So at this moment, so I have a question to Kurosawa-san for the uh, above class. So, yeah. Uh, for the how about the F effect for the vibration or the jitters for the centrifuge during the experiment? Uh, sorry, uh, you. Did you mean the, sorry, could you say again? Yeah, so you use the centrifuge on orbit. Yes. And yes. then it generates a jitter or a vibration. Mm -hmm. So how about the effect of the vibration for this year? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, now, sorry, uh, now we are analyzing about uh, experiment results. So I can't answer in detail, but um, before the experiment, we checked the um, vibration effects for the results of the um, uh, experiment, and we decide, uh, and we uh, confirmed that the vibration of of, of the centrifuge, uh, the zeta of the centrifuge, is uh, uh, it's not too uh, too much to affect the results of an experiment. Thank you, okay. Thank you very much. And uh, this is for Okada. Okada. Yeah, also Okada. Is the artificial gravity different as you get closer to core? Or what is the effect upon animal different gra uh, gravity at head butter feet? So the uh, difference of the gravity. Thank you for asking the question. And the, it is possible that the, when the mice we are, the centrifuge force of head is uh, in the small centrifuge becomes twenty percent smaller than the that against flower, and the difference between becomes within ten percent in the large centrifuge, but the, in our recent research, uh, the body weight change between these two centrifuges is uh, not different. So it, we think it is, it can be um, used for the investigation for the animal experiment. Is it okay? Thank you very much, Dr. San. And the question for Kunachi san, how much space do you have for international collaborators? Okay, uh, we have done two international cooperation. Uh, so, in the future, uh, we have uh, more uh, international cooperation. So, um, um, we hope uh, other country uh, researchers uh, interested in uh, our mission. 
Okay. So, how much is it? Maybe it is difficult to answer, but the, you're sure that the, you can accept the general cooperation. That's right? Uh, mm. Two two international uh, corporations. I don't know. Yeah. No, no. How much is space? So means uh, in the future. Space. How, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yes. uh, sorry. Uh, just to confirm. Uh, did you say uh, how uh, how many lives? No, 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 no. no. Well, okay, maybe or uh, how much or. Uh, how much sample or maybe how many that the, if PI is interested, then PI can get or maybe. Uh, um, I don't know. I we have uh, we are planning to uh, uh, other uh, international cooperation uh, in the future. So, uh, um, I, I can't uh, answer uh, correct uh, numbers. Okay, but anyway, so please contact to Mr. Hnet. Oh. Okay, and uh, for Sarawak, Mr. Sarawak, please come in. And uh, how does ELF compare to other funds on my chat, like ER? Yes, sir. Or yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you for our question. As you know, uh, on uh, ISS, uh, other than ERF, uh, ISS uh, electric uh, magnetic levitator uh, is uh, has been operating, and maybe you know uh, EMR uh, can handle. Uh, with uh, metal, only metal, because uh, it uses our uh, electromagnetic force. Uh, on the other hand, our ERF uh, can handle with uh, both our uh, metal and uh, uh, ceramics are uh, oxidized. And uh, so, uh, you know, EMR is also a powerful tool, but uh, we can cover uh, both uh, conductive and non-conductive materials. It is our, our equipment our future feature. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, for Kurosawa, what is the difference between artificial gravity generator and the mass centrifuge? Uh, thank you for question. And uh, the mass centrifuge and uh, the uh, artificial gravity generator we used in our glass mission as the same, uh, same one. Thank you. And also for the Kurosawa-san, for the hourglass mission, due to the small partial size of the lunar simulated sun, were there any side effects during the experiment, such as the sun breaking into the side of the continent? Taking to the side of the container. Ah, thank you for question. Uh, sound speaking. So side effects such as the uh, as Okada said, there's some difference over there. Yeah. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for question. Yes. Um, Yes, uh, after the experiment, uh, we checked the uh, uh, movie uh, uh, recorded on the hourglass box, and uh, there are some effects on the uh, sorry. Yes, sorry. Uh, the uh, simple answer is. Um, the uh, sand sticking to the side of the container is uh, happen, and uh, in we use uh, eight kinds of uh, sands in our transmission, and uh, 
typically the smaller size of the sand uh, uh, stick, to stick to the size of the container. Yes. So yeah, we think uh, we plan, uh, sorry, we think uh, to conduct the next experiment, uh, we need to uh, consider about um, this point. Uh, so yes, thank you for question. Thank you, Kata-san. And the question to Kata-san, are you looking for more international collaborators for future mission for bonds and master study? Oh, this is for conductors. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We hope the more collaboration. So, if you wish to use this facility, please contact with the space agency of your own country. Thank you. Thank you. And also for your uh, for artificial one G, how many RPM? I think it. It's uh, about 70 RPM in the small centrifuge. Mm. Please check our full briefing slide. It is written. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for Yumoto-san, may other international partners use the terrace? Ah, yes, of course, we'd like to make collaboration with RT, but we will need to set up formal collaboration. So please, Firstly, contact me if you are interested. Okay, thank you very much. And Imoto, so I have one question that they, do you have any plans? So, Terrace is now using that in the global, but so not in the uh, artificial G conditions. So, do you have Hi. any yeah. plans to use that the Terrace system during the gravity conditions? Uh, is, uh, oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. It's okay. uh, can, I, can I answer? Uh, yeah. Terra is just uh, the, the facility for the uh, observation. So if you use uh, some uh, breeding system like uh, ALMAS, a CBF system, or a NASA AM, so uh, uh, we can accept any small mice. So uh, if you use our mouse system, so you can uh, observe the, uh, the mice which are uh, under the uh, artificial gravity. Thank you. And uh, so this is for this is for Tanaka san maybe what can we learn from crystals being grown in space how much do we know about this already and what is extraordinary and new to know about crystal growth in space yeah so the main point is to if the uh, resolution is improved uh, we can identify uh, position of the water molecule or uh, even the uh, hy uh, hydrogen uh, atom. Uh, that means that the, uh, um, if we part up such a uh, position uh, of the water molecule on, on the uh, protein molecule uh, with some uh, artificial, well, newly designed uh, compound, then it will work as the excellent new drug. And uh the three uh, example i have shown on the slide uh, is related to such a uh, good results so uh some uh, crystallographer can find new drugs and also some crystallographer finds uh new uh, reaction mechanisms inside the uh, protein molecule that is very excellent uh, of our Results. Is it okay? Thank you, Tanaka san. And also, one question is crystal glow in capillary. Is it possible to deflect X ray directly? Yeah. 
uh, it depends on the material. So if we use the glass capillary, uh, it, it cannot be applied to the X-ray diffraction directly. But if we use the uh, quartz capillary, it is all right. So uh, in some case, we recommend user to use the uh, quartz capillary in future. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, so there's no questions from audience at this moment. And I have one question for Saru watari -san. So at this moment, the arrow works fully or that they, they can, you can measure. You, you mean, uh, uh, now, now uh, what, what uh, experiment uh, do we do? Um, so, the, so you said that you can uh, measure density and the uh, substation and the uh, viscosity. You can measure all the such thermal properties at this moment? Uh, you mean, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes, we, we can. Uh, we can uh, verify uh, the uh, the some of his uh, all all type all kind of some physical properties measurement capability, uh, including uh, density, uh, viscosity, so uh, so tension. So if we can operate uh, fully at this moment. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. And uh, also, Kurosawa san so that you said that you you are now planning to the next mission for like our classes for so or like you hope to conduct the next mission yes um sorry uh, you did you say do you mean um our next mission do oh, yeah. you plan, we plan to oh okay thank you uh yes uh we hope to um conduct the next experiment uh, in the huge uh, size of centrifuge in the gem, uh, Kibo module in ISS. And uh, we hope to, uh, in this time, our glass mission uh, measure the basic data of the suns. And uh, hopefully, uh, next mission, uh, we try to uh, measure the uh, not basic data, uh, the, um, sorry, the, the interaction between the sun and the uh, mechan uh, some mechanics. Uh, yes. Is that okay? okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And it seems that we have no other questions from the audience. So I'd like to conclude this session. Thank you very much. Excellent. Murakami san, thank you very, very much. Thank you to all of our panelists. We appreciate your time very much. Excellent presentations. Thank you. Okay. And with that, um, we are going to take a 30 minute break. Um, we will be back at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, which I believe is uh, uh, double 30 universal. Um, uh, yes, so we'll be back in 30 minutes and we'll see you in just a bit. Thank you. <laughs>